In this box is one of my dream bags from Louis Vuitton. I have wanted this bag, oh gosh, I don't know, years, ever since I first learned of its existence, I knew that this bag had to be part of my collection. I finally got it, however, I way overpaid for it. And when I say overpaid, I'm comparing that to the retail price. I think I paid about double what the retail price was. So I'm gonna unbox this, I'll show you what it is, we'll talk about it, and I also wanna ask you in this video, and we'll discuss this some, how much are you willing to overpay for your dream bag? Because that's something I'm really grappling with on this one. It was stupid expensive. Stay tuned to see what I got and hear my thoughts on this, and I am very interested to hear your thoughts as well in the comments section below. <music> Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. And what I'd really love to know from you in the comment section is what is your ultimate dream bag, your holy grail bag, and how much you're willing to overpay for it to add it to your collection. Going through the thought process, even somebody like me who I have this handbag collection, I've been doing handbags for years, I still struggle sometimes with these decisions. Maybe hearing my thought process can help you with your thought process when you're trying to decide about a bag. I have not felt this way about an unboxing in a very, very long time, probably since I don't have it out, my other Chanel reissue, my bronze one, which was just slightly more expensive than the bag that I'm unboxing now. That was really my ultimate dream bag. Way more than I'd ever spent on a bag before. It was, I think, 3,400 plus tax. That was really difficult to swallow. I don't even, I'm not even breathing properly. I have knots in my stomach for the past few days. I simultaneously feel like something is wrong at any given moment. I feel like crying, I feel like vomiting, and I feel like throwing a party all at once. <laughs> this is really weird. It's a strange feeling and I've been very surprised that I'm having such a physical reaction to this bag. And really the reaction I think is more to the price of it. I had the chance to purchase this bag two years ago in the spring of 2020 when it was half the price it is now, a price that was closer to its retail price. I don't remember why I chose not to buy that bag, but I remember making a very conscious choice not to buy it. I was going back and forth about it, and I just decided not to, and for whatever reason, that was the right decision for me at the time. That spring of 2020, I remember there were a lot of bags that were hard to find that were coming up on the pre-loved market, because that's right when COVID was hitting and people were selling bags, they were dumping things to get cash, and people weren't buying so much. So I remember seeing this bag on Fashion File. It was a decent price. It wasn't like way underpriced, but it was a little under what it usually is. And there were just lots of great bargains at that time. And I took advantage of a few of them, which may have been why I didn't purchase that bag. I probably had made a few purchases before that and decided to cut myself off. Well, I just saw this bag pop up on Fashion File the other day. You see it from time to time. It's, it's kind of a rare bag, but it's not that rare. Like there are usually a couple of them on the market and the price has gone way up on these. Okay, maybe I should unbox it and then talk more about the price and then you'll understand better what I'm talking about. So let's get into this. I'm, I'm like, I'm not even myself right now. I'm flustered, I'm, I can't, think straight. I don't feel organized like I usually am with these things. And I'm really nervous about opening this. Although, I don't know why I feel so nervous. Well, I do. It's the price. The bag is going to be spectacular and it's in great condition. So I'm not worried about seeing the bag. I'm excited to see the bag, of course. Okay, here we go. Fashion file. My receipt fell out as per usual. Ah, the fashion file nail file. The little circles. Here we go. Lifting the paper. The noisy, noisy paper. Pulling this out 
of the dust bag. This did only come with the fashion file dust bag. It feels slightly dented. I think that'll be okay though. It should be easy to fix. Um, it didn't come with the original dust bag or the box or anything like that. Oh God, okay. When I pull this bag out, you're going to be like really disappointed because you're gonna think, why is she making such a big deal over that bag? But don't turn the video off. Stay with me because there's a surprise. Okay, we're gonna do this now. Are you getting hints yet as to what it could be? Oh dear. Yes, are you disappointed yet? <gasps> Check it out. It is a Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in monogram. But is it? I told you you'd be disappointed, right? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh yes, there it is. Oh, that is spectacular. <sighs> Deep breaths. Wow. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I have mentioned this bag many, many times. You know that turquoise, we point around the room at turquoise, there's turquoise everywhere, is my color. Green as well, but turquoise is the original my color. And this bag has just always had to be in my collection. We'll talk about where I've seen this bag before and how I felt about it when I saw it in person, because it was different than what I expected. We'll talk about the price and why I decided it would be okay to overspend so much on it. And we'll talk about my reservations because ever since I bought it, I've been thinking, should I be returning this because it's too expensive. And we'll talk about the whole thought process behind that. And all of this I wanna tell you because it can relate to the same kinds of struggles that you might have trying to justify spending a lot on your dream bag. Let's do the spin here. You guys know what a Neverfull looks like and you just saw it's a plain monogram Neverfull on the back so I could wear it like this. Oh, and then inside, you may have noticed that attached to the outside of the bag is this odd little Vachetta strap that attaches to the pouch inside. So this is a complete set. This piece came with the pouch and when you unzip that you can see that the interior of the pouch is the turquoise. It has the pocket. This is the new model, never full. Inside I said there's a surprise and that is that it did come with the dust bag. I either missed that or forgot that it was in the description or they didn't put it in the description but that's nice. And then the inside of the bag, the interior looks like this. It is that turquoise and because it's the new model it has stripes but not the florets. And this bag is made in Spain and as I was looking at others of these that are available for purchase right now, I saw another that was made in Spain and one that was made in France. So they were at least made in those two places. It seems like there would be a video on this bag somewhere on YouTube, right? But I couldn't find one. If any of you know of one, do let me know. Surely mine can't be the first, right? So let me tell you about the two times that I have seen this bag in person before. And I had already known about this bag and loved it and coveted it. But one was at an art teacher's conference down in Galveston. Somebody walked by me with this bag over their shoulder and I was floored because it was a mythical creature to me at the time. And the thing that struck me about the bag in the few seconds that I saw it there was how bright this color is. In person, it is very bright. It's not like neon. It's not screaming like some of the colors that are out today, but it is quite bright. And that was years ago that I saw this. The second time I I saw this bag was just about a month or two ago and I was at Louis Vuitton. Becca's my sales associate there and she took me into the VIP room for something. I think she was showing me a perfume maybe that they had sitting back there that had special packaging or something. And we walked in and one of these bags was just sitting on the floor. There was nobody else back there and it was full of stuff. It was clearly someone's bag and I gasped and nearly fainted. Oh my God, that's one of my dream bags. And Becca said, yeah, I know that belongs to one of our managers, like a regional manager or something who was visiting the store. And I even whipped my phone out and took a picture of it. I'll put that picture up here. Her bag was obviously well loved and it just reignited my love for this bag and made me want one again. I'm not sure why I haven't purchased it before. I think maybe there have always been bags that I wanted a little more because I already have three Neverfulls and I thought, do I really want another Neverfull? Is it really that special of a bag? And I still kind of struggle with that because for the price I pay, I'll tell you now what I paid for it. Fashion File had this listed for 2000 $895, so $2,900 with tax and everything, it was over $3,000. I just feel like that is an insane amount of money to spend on a Neverfull, especially on a canvas Neverfull 
And even on a leather Neverfull, I just feel like if I'm gonna spend that much, I'm gonna get a Chanel, right? Or something more special than a Neverfull. And that's one of the things that I've been struggling with about this purchase. But I keep coming back to a few things about this bag that makes it, I don't know if worth the price is the right way to say it, but allows me to justify it. I've wanted this bag for years. I have known for years that this bag needs to be in my collection. Now it finally is. The turquoise, of course, is the big thing about it. And really, it's not even the V on the outside, which, I don't care all that much about. It's the interior. I just love that interior so much. That is the thing that really speaks to me the most about this bag and makes me want it so badly. I've worried about being able to fit this in my wardrobe well. Like today I'm wearing jeans and a white top because you can put anything with that, but I don't know how well it's gonna go with a lot of the other things in my wardrobe. But then I think, well, I have a lot of bags. I rotate them a lot. Not all my bags have to go with everything in my wardrobe. Some of them can go with just some things because I have plenty of other bags to wear with the other things in my wardrobe. That's something I've learned over the years is not every bag you buy has to go with everything. You can have some that are a little less practical that you really love. Something else I thought about because the interior is what's so special to me is instead of getting this bag going the Mon Monogram or the My Heritage route where I could take plain Neverfull, I can get the stripes put on it, my initials, whatever colors I want from what they have to choose from, and then I can get a turquoise interior. They have a color called Vert Claire, which is very similar to this, but it's a little more green, which I really like. And I have designed that bag so many times over the years and just never took the plunge on it, partly because Again, those bags are more expensive. And I thought about that when I went to purchase this bag the other day. Should I go with this or should I go ahead and buy the Mon Monogram? And I looked at it and you know, the prices of the Neverfulls have gone up recently by quite a bit. And so the Mon Monogram price has gone up and it was only a few hundred dollars cheaper than this. I've never been that big a fan of the stripes on the front and then having my initials on it. It just, it's okay, but I wish that there were more options from Louis Vuitton for a personalized bag. And then I hadn't really thought about this until right now, but if I did ever want or need to resell the bag, it would be much easier to sell this bag than it would be the Mon Monogram that has my initials on it. This bag, the Turquoise V, the Voyage, by the way, here's a little close up of the text on it in French. This bag came in two colors, the Turquoise and a Grenade which is a pink, a magenta pink. The magenta one is much easier to find on the pre-loved market than this bag is. It's also quite a bit less expensive. For some reason, people really love the turquoise. It's harder to find when people get them, they tend to hold on to them. And on the pre-loved market, the turquoise ones are more expensive. This line of bags, the turquoise and the pink ones, they came in the Neverfull, I think only the Neverfull MM. The Speedy 30, there's a bag charm, which is right here. So let's pair these up, why don't we? I usually wear this on the other side, on this side, but there we go. So that's what it looks like with a little bag charm. Oh, that's cute. They also had a wallet, a long zippy wallet, and they had a cosmetic pouch. My thought process on this bag, if it's available and you want it bad enough, you just kind of have to pay whatever it costs if you want to add it to your collection. And that's one of the things about justifying the price on a dream bag, if it's something that's really rare in particular, or if it's a condition issue, or if it's both. I on my channel, as you know if you watch this channel much, it's all about luxury living on a budget, right? This bag was not budget friendly, but most of my purchases are. What I like to do is, if I have my eye on something in particular, I will wait for years to find the right one in the right condition at the right price. This one, I found it with the pouch. They often don't come with the pouch because you guys know about the Neverfulls. People tend to sell them separately because you can get more money that way. But not only did this one come with the pouch, you also have to see the condition on it if you haven't already noticed. Check out the Vachetta on this thing. This bag is basically in brand new condition. Okay, the Vachetta is like white. I think this must have sat in someone's closet or sat in the box. Let me show you so you can see this in comparison. My Turin MM, this bag has a very slight patina and you can see side by side, the Neverfull, which is an older bag than the Turin is a lighter Vachetta. By the way, that luggage tag, if you're wondering, is from the men's line. I got that pre-loved years ago. Here's my Neverfull in Azure. It has the bag charm from Leather Prints on Etsy. I'll link that below. Love that. It's my little African gray like Vincent. So this bag I purchased pre-love. It's in great shape. 
it does have more of a honeyed patina on it. So when you compare those two, you can tell the patina on the Azure bag is quite a bit darker, still not crazy dark, than the patina on this bag, on the turquoise bag. I mean, this, this is basically straight out of the store, brand new Vachetta. It's incredible. This is part of the reason that I was so drawn to this bag and willing to get it. And before I purchased it, I sent the listing to Winnie. Winnie wrote back immediately and I, I told her, you know, some of the things I was thinking about with this. Like, look, this bag came up. It has the pouch. It's one of my dream bags. It's in brand new condition. Look at the Vachetta on that thing, but also look at the price. $3,000 basically, okay, for a Neverfull. And I know I can get this bag cheaper. I've seen it other places cheaper, but look at the condition. 3,000 is a stupid amount of money to pay for a Neverfull. Should I get it? If I don't get it, will I regret it? When he wrote back immediately and said, get it. You will never, I mean never, find that bag in that condition again. And I think she's right. I think if I did send this back that I would regret it. I would be kicking myself for years because I would still be looking for this bag and I would never be able to find it in this condition again. And the prices on them are just going up. That's another thing about the price and how I justified this. There is one of these bags on the pre-loved market right now that was $1,500. So half the price of this one. However, the Vachetta is much darker and stained and has water spots. So the bag itself looked good. The inside, the pictures weren't great. It seemed like maybe there was a big stain on the bottom and some discoloration. It was really hard to tell from the photos though. That bag did not come with the pouch and it was just much more worn looking. Canvas was in great shape, but the leather was more worn. And I even thought, well, it's $1,500 compared to $3,000. I could get that bag. I could have Louis Vuitton replace the Vachetta. And I think that costs about $600. So I'd still be ahead then. It'd be in the low 2000s. Just the other day, maybe the day after I purchased this from Fashion File, Fashion File has another one listed without the pouch and the Vachetta not as nice for 2200. So that means that a little better condition and having the pouch, oh, it wasn't 2200, it was 2295, so 2300, like a $600 difference. So about $600 for the pouch, which is actually a good price for that pouch because I've seen the turquoise pouch listed for over a thousand dollars. Again, just because this bag is sought after and somewhat hard to find. But as I was looking at other listings, whether they were on Fashion File or The Real Real or wherever else on the internet, this bag in worst condition and with and without the pouch, mostly without the pouch, most of the listings I saw for this were over 3,000 and like well over 3,000 and some were over 4,000. So to get this in brand new condition with the pouch for 2,900 plus tax, they're all going to have tax added. I thought, well, it's ridiculously expensive. It's overpriced. It's way too much. However, considering the current market, it's actually a good price. Relatively speaking, it might even be a bargain. I have to choke a little when I say that. When I bought the bag, I thought, well, I'm buying it from Fashion File, so at least I can return it if I decide I really can't handle that price for what this is, or if I see it and I don't like it, because I'd only seen it twice in person. I'd never really been able to look at it up close and inspect it and, and really get a sense of how it would work for me, color-wise is what I mean, because I know the Neverfull works for me. And I tell you what, last night I got this bag in the mail yesterday, and last night I was sitting around with the box next to me in my room here and having that knot in my stomach. And I went and looked at the listings again. And I looked at the other ones that weren't as nice as this. And then I pulled up the listing for this one. And it just, every time I looked at it, I instantly got the butterflies, you know, the, the good feelings. Seeing it in person, it's a keeper. I mean, I have to keep it. I, I love it. And like Winnie said, I will never find it in this condition again. So it's going to stay with me. And now that's barring any flaws that I haven't found yet. I haven't looked this over with a fine tooth comb. I will say the one that was on Fashion File for $22.95, it was in great shape, but one of the corners you could see the turquoise stitching, like maybe five stitches or so. One of the things that was happening, every time I would question this purchase and I would go look at another item, I would find things wrong with it. And I felt like, I don't really believe this sort of thing, but it felt like the universe is saying, no, no, Autumn, you made the right decision buying this bag. This is the one that's meant to be with you. And the other ones, those just aren't your bags. Not that there's anything like wrong with them. I, like if I'd never seen this bag and I got one of those, I would have been perfectly happy. But I have this one and this is mine. This is my bag. It's exciting. I feel better about it now, actually. Now that I have seen it in person, finally opened it up, um, 
I do feel good about it. Because I tell you, I never thought I would spend this much to get this bag, but I'm really feeling a lot better about it right now than I was at the beginning of this video. I'm really excited to have it, finally. I'm excited to use it and just look over and see that interior. That just makes me happy. That color, I mean, it's something that simple, right? Just makes me happy. I love it. I just looked at the date code on this bag. By the way, if you don't know where they are on Neverfulls, the ones that have date codes and not the chip, they're under the pocket right here on that little tag. And it says this bag is from 2015. We're currently in 2022. So that makes this bag seven years old and it still looks brand new. It's incredible. Also, it has, I noticed a little, not a crease, but a little indentation there. And I'm thinking that this bag was probably stored flat like this in its box. And that's how it's still so new. By the way, people ask me how I find stuff like this because I find great things all the time. It's because I'm looking at the websites all the time. Like I'm obsessive about it, mostly because I have this channel and I like to stay on top of things for several reasons related to the channel. It's not that I'm constantly shopping, I'm constantly researching really. And because of that, I come across things like this and I'm usually one of the first people who sees them because like with the Real Real and Fashion File, those are the two I check multiple times a day. The Real Real posts twice a day. They post new listings twice a day. Once at 9 a.m. Central Time and once at 6 p.m. Central Time. And I'm a First Look member with them. That means I pay $10 a month, not much, and I get 24 hour early access to the new releases. So if you're not a member, you don't see things until 24 hours after after they've been released to the members, which means the best stuff at the best bargains is already sold and you never even had a chance to see it. Fashion File posts constantly throughout the day, so I'm checking them, their new listings constantly. I actually didn't see this until a day after it was posted. I was a little surprised it was still there. I'm sure glad it was. One thing I should note about this bag is that sometimes it can be difficult to tell from photographs quite what color this is or what shade of turquoise it is. Sometimes it looks pretty green in the photos and sometimes it looks very blue. So I wanted to give you a couple of color comparisons. I have this turquoise stone and turquoise comes in a lot of colors, but you can tell that that's kind of similar, but I think my necklace is more blue than this is. It definitely has a bit of a green tone. And again, it is a very bright turquoise. Um, the outside is, the inside is not as bright as the printing on the outside. I have this turquoise notebook cover from Hermes definitely more blue than the Louis Vuitton turquoise, which is more green in comparison. I don't know how helpful this will be, but I have this little pencil box that's in a turquoise and it's quite a green turquoise. So that's how it looks against the Louis Vuitton turquoise, which is more blue than this is. It's really an incredible find and I wish to you all the incredible finds as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope this was helpful. I appreciate you being here. Hope to see you back here next time and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.